Today, Netflix has become a household name and an industry leader with around 195.15 million paid subscribers in the third quarter of 2020. Everybody has a Netflix subscription, or at least someone you know has one, and you just use theirs like most of us. However, Netflix did not begin so strongly, nor were they given an easy path to grow on. Today, I am going to tell you how this great company began and what strategies they used to reach the pinnacle of the entertainment industry. In 1991, Reed Hastings started his first company called Pure Software. The company sold a range of debugging software. With little to no competition, the company grew exponentially, and in 1996, it was sold to Rational Software for $700 million. Hastings was now a millionaire. However, this was not to be his biggest achievement. Now comes the real history of how a tech-savvy professor went on to rule the entertainment industry. In 1997, Hastings forgot to return a video rental of the Apollo 13 movie and had to pay a $40 fine. This fateful event gave birth to an idea that was to revolutionize the world. Hastings wanted to introduce a video rental system that would abolish the late fee system and would be more customer friendly. Thus, in 1997, he opened Netflix as a DVD rental company in Scotts Valley, California. This move in itself was a huge risk as DVD players had just been recently made in Taiwan and were selling at a price of up to $1,000 in the US. Only 1% of the population owned a DVD, but Hastings believed that DVDs were the new big thing and would soon replace the bulky VHS tapes. Hastings mailed over 200 mailing packages to himself to choose the best one for sending to his subscribers. After careful selection, Hastings concluded that he could send a DVD rental for the price of a first-class mail stamp. The package also included a return to sender mailer to make the process as easy as possible. Thus, with 30 employees and around 925 DVD titles, Netflix launched its website in 1998. The biggest game changer here was the smart selection algorithm introduced by Netflix. This meant that after a certain number of DVD rentals, Netflix would offer its subscribers content relevant to them. In 1998, this was one-of-a-kind technology that helped Netflix stay ahead of its competition. Soon, Netflix signed deals with Toshiba, Hewlett-Packard, and Sony. In July 1999, Netflix launched a subscription-based service that allowed people to rent unlimited DVDs for $16 a month. The only catch was that you could not have more than four titles at the same time. At this stage, Netflix was receiving 10,000 orders per day. However, it was nothing compared to Blockbuster, which was at that time the biggest video rental service in the United States. Netflix, fearing stiff competition for Blockbuster, decided to invite the company for a strategic partnership. The Netflix name would be removed and instead Blockbuster.com would be the name of the new web page. However, the board members laughed out the Netflix representatives and decided to stick with the then safe option of VHS tapes. 2001 proved to be the changing point for Netflix, with DVD prices plummeting to as low as $100 and with the 9-11 tragedy forcing Americans to stay in their homes, Netflix subscriptions skyrocketed. Despite extensive growth, the company was still unable to turn a profit and thus in 2002, they went public to keep themselves going and in 2003, they hit the 1 million subscriber mark and started to turn a profit. But soon, competition arrived in the market as both Walmart and Blockbuster began their own video rental online services. However, it was too little too late as the online market was now dominated by Netflix. Hastings once jokingly said that Blockbuster has thrown everything but the kitchen sink at us. When Blockbuster's CEOs heard this, he mailed a sink to the Netflix office as a declaration of war. They were basically the business world's depiction of a playground bully. Too dumb to innovate and too egocentric to let others thrive, well, that's the business world. Soon, Netflix's profits declined, but they remained determined and continued to grow. 
Their efforts bore fruit, and soon they were shipping a million titles every day from a collection of 35,000 DVDs. The corporate battle was also coming to an end as both Blockbuster and Walmart were forced to pull out due to extensive losses. Soon, Blockbuster's profits disappeared, and by 2010, they had filed for bankruptcy. Finally, in 2007, Hastings was able to bring his final plan into action and provide video on demand. Netflix began its online streaming service in 2007. However, the issue was that movie rights were hard to come by, and the initial titles available to watch on the service were, well, rotten. In October 2008, the company Fortunes took a turn for the better as they signed a deal with Stars, which allowed them to stream premium Disney and Sony content. Stars was followed by Lionsgate and Paramount. Netflix further made deals with Apple, PlayStation, and Xbox, and was featured on every entertainment system on the planet. Soon, Netflix went international, and with that move, they decided to bring their own show, and they outbid HBO for its rights. Before moving forward, go ahead and subscribe to our channel, and we will make sure you keep seeing amazing stuff like this one that you will surely benefit from. I honestly hope all of you know the name of this series. Okay, I'll give you a guess. It's a political drama featuring Kevin Spacey. I believe most of you must have gotten it. It's House of Cards, one of the best political dramas in history. The success of this show became the bedrock on which Netflix would build its streaming empire. I bet all of you are thinking the company can't seem to make any big mistakes. Well, sorry to disappoint you. Netflix launched Quickster, a video rental service. You can see from the name itself what sort of a blunder it was. After immense backlash and loss of around 800,000 subscribers, the company immediately shut down the service. Netflix used the concept of binge-watching to develop their base further and started releasing complete shows. House of Cards was followed by Orange is the New Black and Arrested Development. The suggestion algorithm was able to hold the attention of viewers while its ever-evolving nature allowed Netflix to fill gaps in the market by creating newer shows based on consumer preferences. Now they are able to produce and create shows that users want without them realizing they wanted to watch such shows. The market has become saturated with streaming services, however, none of them are close to what Netflix has been able to achieve in a short span of time. The real points go to the management, who remain dedicated and ever ready to accept revolutionary ideas. Hastings took a chance, and he found gold. Despite earlier losses, the company continued to outperform all its competitors. They marketed a unique selling plan and identified the gaps in the market and filled those gaps before anyone could take their place. However, despite all their efforts, the real secret to their success is their ability to evolve to the needs of the time. They started DVD rentals when everyone was using VHS, and they turned to the internet when DVDs filled the shelves. They have been one step ahead at each and every turn, and thus have retained their position in the online streaming industry. Netflix success secrets and unique strategy can be seen from the very beginning. At the time of VHS, they brought in the concept of DVDs and home delivery service. This revolutionary move in itself set Netflix apart from all of its competitors. Furthermore, the management's own persistence during the initial stages of growth helped the company push through the tough times. However, the real ace in the hole was Netflix's suggestion algorithm that allowed them to cater to their customers' needs more efficiently and effectively. Finally, they were the first company to bring their own online streaming service, which set them up as leaders in the soon-to-be saturated market. Collectively, these were the trade secrets that allowed Netflix to grow exponentially. Netflix has a unique, preemptive algorithm that could revolutionize the way you receive advertisements when applied to the advertising industry. It has already begun. You can already feel it. For example, you search something on the web and minutes later, you start to receive ads on related products. 
This, my friends, is all because of an algorithm running in the background analyzing all of our search data. The online food delivery business could also benefit from such an algorithm. After taking into account the last couple of orders, the system could recommend similar restaurants to consumers which will streamline the business. This will especially help the couples out there, the never-ending debate of where to order from just got a whole lot simpler. Netflix has become an industry giant and has spent $17 billion on producing new shows in 2020 alone. It has been a hell of a journey, one who can stand as an example to all those entrepreneurs. Never lose hope and never quit early in the game. I hope you guys liked our video. Hit the like button if you did. Also, subscribe to our channel to receive our content directly on your feed and oh yeah, hit that bell icon to receive instant updates from our channel. Keep watching!